Our driving motivations in life, instead of remaining constant, change hugely over time and in ways that don't quite fit Maslow's classic hierarchy. In young adulthood, people seek a life of growth and self-fulfillment, just as Maslow suggested. Growing up involves opening outward. We seek out new experiences, wider social connections, and ways of putting our stamp on the world. When people reach the latter half of adulthood, however, their priorities change markedly. Most reduce the amount of time and effort they spend pursuing achievement in social networks. They narrow in. Given the choice, young people prefer meeting new people to spending time with, say, a sibling. Old people prefer the opposite. Studies find that as people grow older, they interact with fewer people and concentrate more on spending time with family and established friends. They focus on being rather than doing and on the present instead of the future. Can you say your name and how old you are? I'm Harry and I'm five. I'm Eve Adelson and I am 19 years old. My name is Allison and I'm 43 years old. I'm Ava Shagnon and I'm 18 years old. My name is Monica Hill. I am 77. I'm Danny Ann, um, and I'm 18 years old. My name is Lily Call, and I'm 18 years old. I'm Libby, and I'm 10 years old. Uh, my name is Matt Fetter, and I'm 18 years old. Hey, okay. hi, I'm Francis, and I'm 21. I am 45. Uh, my name is Lizzie Fifty, and I'm 19 years old. What do you live for? What excites you the most? Such a broad question. Um, I live for learning new things, spending time, spending time with friends and also making friends, um, enjoying just like the little things in life. Oh, glory. Um, first and foremost, I live for my family. Probably seeing my kids happy and succeed. I love nice weather, being outside, um, and laughing with friends and family. I guess I live for like, opportunities, striving to be happy. Family and risks. For good books. I don't know, finding a certain purpose in life, I guess. I live for having a fun time with my friends and having fun time with my family, skiing, snowboarding. Basically, I live simply so others can simply live. What excites you the most in your life? What excites me? Quiet. Okay. Um, I think what's most exciting for me is trying new foods and visiting new places. I think it's fun to watch my kids grow up and start to develop and try new things. Like one kid's doing swim team, it's kind of fun to watch her progress and see how much better she gets at a sport. What are three things you're looking forward to in the next year? I'm looking forward to... Um, Rush. Is that like a... Yeah, that's good. Okay. Rush, um, like just the next semester of high school, or sorry, of college, where like a lot of things will change. I don't really look forward to things, to be honest with you. Being in safety patrol and continuing in student council. Huh. Um, I'm excited to graduate college. Um, I'm excited to find a job. I don't know, I, I think I'm still in a very formative time in my life, so I have a lot of potential for growth um, in a lot of areas of my life, which is very exciting. Um, still have, you know, a lot of interests that I can explore. Get a degree in something that I am interested in and follow my passion. I'm excited to stop working, to educate my children, and then uh, to travel the world. Okay. And my business is starting to settle in and grow, so that'll be fun to see what a summer is like. What in the past week has made you most excited? Um, this week, what have I done? Um, I went to a trivia night at a bar with two of my friends. The miniature horses. <laughs> Visited with a good friend. That made me really excited. I got found out that I got an A in one of my classes. Woo! I'm proud of you. What has made you most upset in the past week? Mimi yelling at me. Your sister yelling at you? Finals. <laughs> I have a family member who's struggling with addiction. People stealing stuff from my room. Probably my job. Why? Hmm? Why? Um, because it's really a waste of time at this point. Okay. A uh, boy didn't text me back. Describe the three emotions you experience most often. Um, I experience anxiety a lot. Um, 
I experience like contentment, jealousy, overwhelmed. I don't know, like fear, I guess, sometimes. Like accomplished. Curiosity, I don't think that's really an emotion, but. Happy. Yeah. Uh, like a little anxious. And lazy. I guess, frustration. Anticipation. Lots of laughter with my little grandchildren, the little ones. They are very funny. Overtired. Happiness. Excited. Mad. Happiness. Um, joy, those are two different things. And I'd say a little bit of sadness. Happy. Oh, mmm, oh, yeah, excited, that's one. Two, um, uh, is happy an emotion? I feel like that as well. And then three is just kind of like, um, I'll, I'll, this one will be a little bit more negative. I guess like ambivalent, you know, like a little bit unsure, um, I think, comes, comes with the territory, so, yeah. Annoyed. Gratitude. Gratitude for a normal day. Frustration. <laughs> Happiness. Can I have to say that And one? anger. If you could go to dinner with any person, who would it be? Oh, Ellen DeGeneres. Nadia Comaneci. John Meacham, who is a fascinating writer and historian. Probably one of my friends. Well, let's see, the gooch would be fun. And then, uh, that's a good one. Baker Mayfield. Probably President Price. Probably my kids and husband. My grandma. Okay, and if this were your last meal, would your answer change? I don't think so. Um, yes. <laughs> it would change like my family. <laughs> but if it was my last meal, it would be with family members. Well, then I would probably want to be with my family. When I say the word death, what three words come to mind? End. Dark. And... Closure. Sadness. Tragedy. Legacy. Peace. Gratitude. And a smile. How comfortable would you say that you feel with the idea of your own mortality? Um, not the most comfortable. Not at all. Um, you know, pretty comfortable actually. How does it make you I'm feel? I'm perfectly fine with it. Why? Because it is an inevitability. And I have good life insurance that will make everybody take care of everybody. So I, I really honestly don't care right now. I mean, obviously it scares me. I'd like to say that I'm like comfortable with the fact that I am going to die, but the process of dying is a little bit scary. It makes me feel like every day counts and every minute counts and every second counts. I'm very comfortable with it because at 77, You'd have to be very dim not to face the fact that your mortality, your death is not imminent, but the odds are against you. It makes me sad to think that I won't get to enjoy the things that I enjoy and that my family and whoever will be sad when I die, but you know, it's the way of all things. Do you feel scared? No. You aren't scared? Like in the moment now, I don't really think about death because I'm so young and there's not really much for me to think about regarding it. And I don't really plan my life on that. I kind of plan my life now for the future. But in the end, like say I'm like 80, whatever. And I look back on my life, like if I made an impact on my world and like enjoyed my life overall, I think that I wouldn't be so scared of like it being over. But at the same time, I would be. I don't know. <laughs> I would not like to leave friends and family, but I know it's going to happen anyway. I don't like it. I'm not going to live. Death is like my biggest fear, partially because, well, mainly because like I don't know what happens after. Being I'm not very like religious or spiritual in any way, so the fact that like life can just end and like me being here might have zero purpose like scares the crap out of me. How would your priorities change if you knew you only had three weeks to live? Um, I would not write any of these papers. <laughs> um, 
Mm, that's interesting. So we, we talked about uh, this a lot in um, this like political science type of seminar that I've had, um, and it's kind of about like these intrinsic and extrinsic motivations. Um, and I think if there are only three weeks left, then it kind of gets to the point where you're gonna be more focused on those intrinsic things. And while I don't feel like it's bad to be extrinsically motivated, and like I'll admit like a lot of my motivations are like extrinsic and that'll like keep you progressing in life, which I always think is a good thing. But ultimately like what is most fulfilling will be like those intrinsic things. So like that'll be like, you know, like spending time with, you know, the people that I love. Um, like Jack McNeely. Thank um, you. You're welcome. I mean, if I had three weeks to live, I wouldn't worry about the kids doing their day-to-day -day stuff, and I would just make sure that we had time together. I would, like, do things that I know would make me happy in the moment versus, like, things that would make me happy in the long run. I'd probably drop out of school because there's not really a point of me staying in school if I'm going to die in three weeks because I'm going to school to, like, do well after that. Yeah, I would just stop worrying about things that don't really matter and focus on my family and my friends and my relationships. And what do you think stopping you from doing that now? Um, I guess just the pressure of being like alive <laughs> and being a student. Um, just being so goal oriented that you can't focus on what actually makes you happy. Three weeks left, might as well just like go do some things that you wouldn't necessarily do if you know you have to consider again like the mortality or whatever like direction your life is going in. If I only had three weeks, I would go to Scotland with all of my family and we go to the places where my little grandson could see the blue nosed dolphins and I could show my grandchildren all the places that I enjoyed as a child yeah. and it probably rain so we'd have wellington boots and raincoats but it wouldn't make any difference and also you know like taking some more risk because you know like fuck it right like we i mean screw it like we have, um... well i would definitely like quit school and just if i if i was able to i would definitely travel the world so why right now do you think you're so focused on school uh because it's kind of like a step to um, being successful and just like doing what you like as like a job for when you graduate. So like if I knew that I only had three weeks to live, like preparing for the future, like wouldn't be necessary. If you were to offer one piece of advice to someone younger than you, what would it be? Um, live in the moment, I guess. and don't get caught up in the little things that don't matter in the long run. To like be open to everything. Make sure you're always <laughs> laughing. Know the reasons like why you're doing things and make sure that they're the right reasons. Be yourself. Uh, don't take everything so seriously. And go do something interesting. Don't do something for money. Do what makes you happy, not what you think will make other people happy. Um, stay true to yourself not to take yourself too seriously. Maybe that's advice I would give my younger self. To live each day as a gift, I mean that most sincerely. If you don't enjoy the present, the future and the past are not as precious as they could be. How we seek to spend our time may depend on how much time we perceive ourselves to have. When you are young and healthy, you believe you will live forever. You do not worry about losing your capabilities. People will tell you the world is your oyster, the sky is the limit, and so on. And you're willing to delay gratification, to invest years, for example, in gaining skills and resources for a brighter future. You seek to plug into bigger streams of knowledge and information. You widen your networks of friends and connections instead of hanging out with your mother. When horizons are measured in decades, which might as well be infinity to human beings, you most desire all that stuff at the top of Maslow's pyramid. Achievement, creativity, and other attributes of self-actualization. But as your horizons contract, when you see the future ahead of you as finite and uncertain, your focus shifts to the here and now, to everyday pleasures and the people closest to you.